So, dear brothers, uh, in Christ, <coughs> we thank our Lord once again for giving us uh, yet uh, another uh, opportunity, you see, to discuss uh, wonderful uh, words of life. Dear brethren, <coughs> today uh, we are going to see the topic uh, on uh, Israel. Why do we need to study about Israel? If you see, so we are uh, living in the very last days. We know that uh, we can see uh, all the signs of a lot's uh, presence all over the world. And moreover, Jesus uh, said, uh, you see, uh, a parable about the fig tree in Matthew 24 chapter. We have seen this one in the uh, signs of the second presence, where uh, in Matthew 24, 32, Jesus tells us to learn from the parable of the fig tree that when it is branch are yet tender and put forth leaves, and uh, that you know that uh, the summer is very near. So now we can see the uh, nation of Israel flourishing. The fig tree in the Bible represents the nation of Israel. This is the same fig tree which Jesus cursed at the first advent when he went uh, in search uh, for a fruit uh, among the very well-grown uh, fig tree. But when he went near, he could not find any fruit. So hence Jesus cursed the fig tree. So that fig tree represents the nation of Israel. We read uh, already in the basic class uh, uh, that uh, OCR 910 tells uh, that uh, uh, fig tree represents the nation of uh, Israel. So if the fig tree uh, represents the nation of Israel, so uh, this is what uh, Jesus cursed at the first advent. When he saw nation of Israel from very far, <clears throat> it was very well, uh, you see, grown up. But there was no fruits when Jesus came at the first advent in search, in search of the fruits. So hence, Jesus cursed the fig tree. So we see that Israel was cursed. So today, Israel is very important place for three types of people, Judaism and Islam and Christianity. So the whole world is watching today Israel. What is going to happen to Israel? and What are the things which are happening in Israel? So today we are going to see the time clock of this whole world and that is the nation of Israel. So if we need to understand what time we are living and till what time is there for us, you see, dear brethren, uh, we need to look into the, you see, the nation of Israel. By looking into the nation of Israel, we will come to know <clears throat> the more and the clearer uh, picture. So the Israel the name actually was given to Jacob. Uh, so once uh, when he fought with the angel and uh, he did not leave the angel until he was uh, blessed. And that is the time that the angel uh, gave him a new name called as Israel. The word Israel means he that will rule as God. So unto Jacob, there were 12 sons and through his 12 sons, uh, the nation of Israel was formed. We know that uh, this nation of Israel were led from land of Egypt to the promised land and uh, through the leader Moses and later on through Joshua, they conquered the Canaan land and uh, God gave them the judges for a period of uh, 40 years and after, you see, the period of judges, God gave them the kings uh, for a period of uh, 513 years. There were totally 21 kings uh, who ruled uh, over Israel. After this one, because of their sin, they were led uh, captivity to see the Ren <coughs> to Babylon. And after that one, they were restored from uh, Babylon captivity. That is, was during uh, the first advent of Christ. And God sent his son so that the people of Israel may repent and turn to God. Uh, but uh, the people of Israel, instead of turning to God, they crucified his only son, Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross. Hence, uh, you see in the Bible that uh, the curse came upon the land of uh, Israel. See, they arrested Jesus and took them to Pilate. And Pilate, uh, you see, clearly told, uh, he is an innocent man. I, fo I found uh, now fault uh, in him. So, I will release him. And that is the time that the people of Israel cried and saying, uh, uh, let his blood be upon us and our children. 
we will answer for it. So the same thing happened. So that's what we read in Matthew 27, 25. Can somebody read, brother? Matthew 27, 25. Gopal, brother, can you read? Sure, brother. Okay. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our on and on our children. See, his blood be upon us and our children. So same way, the curse uh, came upon Israel. It was so much uh, that uh, Israel was scattered all over the world. You see, the Romans uh, knew very well that uh, if the Israel are taken captivity, they will regather again to that uh, same land. Uh, but the Romans did not want this one to happen. Hence, uh, dear brethren, what happened was that, uh, you see, the nation of uh, Israel, you see, instead of being taken to captivity, they were scattered all over the world uh, into the places which they never knew. So what was the intention of it, if you see, dear brethren, so that uh, Israel might never gather. Actually, you see, but uh, today we see that, uh, you see, the nation of Israel is gathered and this was actually the fulfillment of the promise uh, that was uh, Originally and foretold many years before even uh, this event happened. Let us read uh, Jeremiah 16 chapter, verse 13, 15, and 18. Jeremiah 16, 13. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that you know not, neither you nor your fathers, and then shall you serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. See, it is... Uh, I will, uh, you see, cast you out uh, from this land to which land? Uh, to land which none of your fathers knew. So which uh, the fathers, if you see, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they were all from uh, Mesopotamia, but they were cast into other lands, it seems. Uh, where? Like, uh, you see, Australia, you see, New Zealand, uh, in Asia, Africa, these places... None of the fathers of Israel knew. And God says, there you shall serve other gods. That means, you shall be under other governments. You see? And uh, God will never show you favor, it seems. Then, verse 15, brother. Huh? But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them and I'll bring them again into the land that I gave unto their fathers. Ah, but again, you see, the prophecy says that uh, God shall never cast out Israel permanently, but they shall be regathered again from all the lands uh, which they had driven out. Uh, into where? Into the land which God had originally promised to them. Uh, now verse 18. Mm. At first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have defiled my land, they have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. Mm, but God says that uh, first, uh, before doing this one, I will first uh, recompense their iniquity double. You see, uh, and the sins double it seems. So God will punish them double uh, it seems, dear brother, before these things. Uh, so, today we can see that uh, this promise uh, is fulfilled before our very eyes. You see, the nation of Israel is gathered uh, and regathered again, you see, since uh, May 14th, 1948. They have got independence and the nation of Israel is uh, clearly identified on the world map. Therefore, so Israel is gathered as a nation. Okay. Ashish brother, can you call brother Gopal? I think uh, some network issue probably. Can you call him and find out? Okay, brother. Okay. So, but uh, we see that the nation of Israel is gathered again back as a nation. They got the independence on May 14th, uh, 1948. So, this was actually the fulfillment of the promise which God had made to Abraham in Genesis 15, 18. You see, God said to Abraham that uh, God made a covenant with Abraham saying, see, from the 
river of Egypt to river Euphrates. I will give you this entire land. Okay, read Genesis 15, 18. Gopal brother, can you read? Or uh, home brother, can you read? Hmm. Genesis 15, 18. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. See, unto the great river, river Euphrates. So, therefore, it is considered as the greatest miracle, you see, than man going to moon. You see, among the 20th century, the greatest event, you see, the man appreciates is that a man going to moon. But uh, the greatest above all this miracle is uh, the regathering of Israel with the same faith, with the same trust, uh, and with the same hope uh, returning to their own uh, um, homeland is the greatest uh, miracle. Why? Because generally, if uh, people go to some other nation, they will usually tend to mix up with that uh, religion. Like, for example, the Western uh, country people, if they come to India, they get, uh, you see, used to the Indian customs, uh, Indian religions. Uh, and similarly, if somebody of uh, here, if they go to abroad, they usually, you see, tend, uh, tend to get uh, to adjust to the other religions of this world. You see? But it is only the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, that they never leave their God and worship other God. And this is the greatest miracle that the people of Israel, though they were scattered all around the world, they gathered with the same hope and the same trust on the only one true God. Therefore, the greatest miracle is the regathering of Israel. And the, and the favor for Israel began to be, you see, uh, coming since 1878. In 1878, the Russia-Turkish war happened. You see, and that is the time that the you see, during this war, uh, that land of the Turkey, you see, was uh, into the world powers. And during that time, the world powers was the Berlin Congress of Nations. I mean, the land of uh, Turkey, you see, was got uh, Turkey. Well, I mean, I mean, the land of Turkey, it means uh, today what we have Afghanistan, today what we have Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, you see, some parts of Somalia. Kuwait, all these lands are called as Turkey land. Originally in 1878, it was called as Turkey land. And during that war, the entire land of uh, Turkey came under the control of, uh, you see, the Berlin Congress of Nation. And the head of Berlin Congress of Nation was a Jew. His name was Benjamin D. Israel. And immediately, he gave the permission to the Jews to return to their own homeland and establish colonies there. And since then, the Jewish people from various parts of the world began to gather in Israel. So this was as per the prophecy of Hosea 2.15, where it tells that I will open the valley of Akor for a door of hope. So literally, the first Jewish settlement took place in Petta Tikva. That was the meaning is the door of hope. You see, before that, the land of Israel was so dangerous that none lived there. And if anybody started to live there, within seven days, they would definitely be infected with uh, malaria and die. But fortunately, by God's grace, since 1878, these Jewish people, a little bit of Jewish people who were gathering there, they began to cleanse the land and made it a habitable place. This for all, actually, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. So let us read uh, two prophecies. Jeremiah 32, 44 and Jeremiah 33, 10. Gopal brother, home brother, can you read? Sure, brother. Hmm. Jeremiah 32, 44. Hmm. Man shall buy field for money and subscribe evidences and seal them and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin and in the places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Judah and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valley and in the cities of the south for I will cause their captive captivity to return said the Lord. 
they will buy the land for punishment. This is the only nation who bought their own, you see, a land, the own land, the own nation for money. They went and bought with a, you see, Arab uh, people, dear brethren. So, and uh, what will happen in Shimsa? This uh, land, which was uninhabited, was totally desolate, began to be inhabited. Jeremiah 33 10. Home oh, brother, if you have the Bible, can you read? Can you read? Jeremiah 33 10. Okay, Ashish brother, can you read? Thus said the Lord, again there shall be heard in this place which you sell, which you say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast. Mm, you see, without inhabitant, without beast, which was desolate shall again be filled with uh, people, it seems. Uh, literally, this happened. Uh, so, the after this, you see, the father of the nation of Israel is uh, Theodore Herzl. He was a great uh, journalist in Europe. He began the Zionist uh, movement, you see. And because of this Zionist movement, he began to call all the, you see, rich and the intelligent Jewish people all around the world, awakening them to come to the promised land, to establish their own, uh, you see, promised land. And that is the time that to the world powers, in 1917, they gave a request to the League of Nations saying, please return as our promised land, which is mentioned in the Bible. And that was granted during the period of Chain Wiseman. Who is this Chain Wiseman? If you see, Chain Wiseman was a person who invented the gunpowder uh, formula, acetone. So, in the First World War, you see, the acetone formula was used and the world, world power, that means Great Britain, won this war and it was because of the invention of a chain wise man. You see, he invented the gunpowder formula. Before that one, there was gunpowder, they, but that formula was uh, much weaker than what he invented. This formula was very much effective and because of this one, the machine guns and other types of, you see, ammunitions were invented. It was because of this person that the world war was won by the Britishers. You see, at that time, the whole world, you see, the world powers, the League of Nations, they asked Chain Weizmann, what do you want? Because of you, we have won the war. You see, and you know, for our surprise, what was the request of Chain Weizmann? He did not demand any field of gold or any a land, a beautiful place, eh? or a comfortable life. But he demanded that uh, the land of Israel be given to the people of Israel. They are requested though, in 1917, that to give the land, please give that land to, you see, the Jewish uh, people. And that is the time that uh, because of his request, uh, uh, the British government uh, sanctioned, the League of Nations uh, sanctioned uh, that uh, Jewish land be given to the Israel people. And this was actually the fulfillment of God's prophecy. Read Jeremiah 16 chapter, verse 14 to 16, brother. Jeremiah 16 chapter, 14 to 16. Gopal, brother, can you read? Yeah, brother. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into the land, and I gave unto their fathers. Behold, I will send. For many fishers, said the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them for every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. God said, I will regather the nation of Israel to their own land. How? How will he gather? It says in verse 16, 
that I will send many fishers and they shall fish them. And after that one, I will send many hunters and they shall hunt from every mountain, every hill, every hole. Mountain in the Bible means kingdom. Hill means small, small nations. Holes means small associations. Therefore, the people of Israel were gathered by fishing, fishermen and hunters is himself. Now, who is this fisherman? If you see, it is none other than Theodore Herzl. As usually, during fishing, the fisherman puts a bait and pushes the fish out of the water. So similarly, you see the brand Theodore Herzl. You see, he put the journal and the pamphlets and the newspaper articles all over the world and published to entire Jewish people. Then through that, he gathered the few of the the Jewish people like fish, uh, fishing individuals. Uh, but uh, did entire uh, uh, Jewish people return to the land? No. Some were still stuck there. Next, uh, what did God send? Uh, God says he will send hunters. Uh, now, who is this hunter? If you see, hunters actually usually uh, do hunting cruelly without showing any mercy. And this hunter is none other than, than Hitler. Hitler actually he hunted the Jewish people who were stuck in all the important uh, you see rich places in uh, uh, Europe. He gathered all the uh, Jewish people and uh, he built a concentration camps and they were put in gas chamber and tortured you see to die. See in such a small chamber, more than 100 people were put uh, and a poisonous gas was left. Uh, and uh, when they used to scream, their sound uh, used to never come out. Uh, how? If you see, see, next to this gas chamber, they used to run a very loud, uh, you see, engine it seems, uh, that should make very loud noise. And the people's cry should never be heard uh, outside. This and after their death, their dead body was taken to post-mortem. Why post-mortem? If you see, the Jewish people were very rich in Europe. And because when they knew that Hitler was coming to kill them, they swallowed all the jewels, the diamonds and the precious, you see, pearls and all. And the German soldiers, and Hitler knew that the Jewish people had swallowed this one. So after killing them, he used to never leave the bodies also. Each and every body was cleanly postmortem, and each and every jewels, you see, what were in the stomach were taken, and their bodies were totally burnt. This, uh, you see, uh, machine, which was a burning system, uh, uh, you see, this was invented by German engineering. And this machine ran continuously, non stop, for four years, it seems. Uh, so, totally more than 60 lakh Jews were. Uh, slaughtered this way and even their ashes were never thrown off. Even today, the ashes are preserved under this, uh, you see, uh, shelter. See, they were taken to the concentration camps and they were made to, you see, uh, lie on these beds only. And the daily food of a Jewish uh, person was just a half liter of uh, tea and a little bit of soup, you see, and only one slice of bread, dear brethren. And the hairs were totally, you see, shaved off. And uh, their shoes were separated, their bones, their skulls. Each and every part of their, uh, you see, body was actually totally separated and bifurcated. You see, and uh, the Jewish uh, children were used for uh, Nazi medical experiments. So today, you see, any new medicine they invent, uh, they usually test it on an animal. It's usually on the rat, uh, mammal. Then if it is successful on an animal, on an animal then only they do, you see, uh, the experiment uh, on human beings. They put it on trial for human beings. Uh, but uh, the German, you see, army, Hitler, what all he invented, you see, he put experiment on whom? The Nazi children and on the women of the Jewish people. You see, he tested what will happen if a human being and an animal are joined together. You see, how will the feasts, how will the child look? All these cruel some experiments, you see, were done, were done on the Jewish women, their brethren. And moreover, 
Yeah, because on the, uh, due to the see because of the skin of a uh, uh, Jewish people, the hairs of the Jewish people, the German uh, used it uh, uh, for their army to to see uh, to prepare leather jackets and to make uh, carpets. Even today, you see uh, in uh, many places they believe that during those days uh, that uh, the nation of Israel was used uh, the flag of nation of Israel was used as a carpet of. Uh, you see, German soldiers, when all this torture was given to the nation of Israel, automatically what happened, you know, huh? when Hitler began to hunt the Jews, all the Jewish people ran away from their hiding places, mountains, hills, you see, and rocks. They were all living in a sophisticated lifestyle. Everybody were thrown out of the air and everybody ran and came to their own land. They feared to live in a foreign land because they thought if somehow we can escape to our own land, we can live peacefully. That is what happened. And this was again the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Jeremiah 31st chapter 8 to 9, brother. Please read, brother. Jeremiah 31, 8 to 9. Gopal, brother, can you read? Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the women with child and her that traveleth with child together. A great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications. How will they come with Simsa? They shall come in traveling with pain. They shall not come in joy, laughter. They shall come weeping with supplications. Why? So much of torture was given that uh, they feared for their lives. They begged at least try to leave us. Leave us. Let us live a, you see, huh? life at least. Uh, even begging also, no problem. Let us leave. Don't kill us. That is how they begged for the life, dear brethren. So the blind, the lame, everybody, they came out uh, where to the promised land it seems. Then continue with huh? I will cause them to walk by the rivers, rivers of the waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. See, I am a father to Israel, it seems. So since then, this great exodus of all the Jewish people from various parts of the world. Even today, Rebudran, you see, many Jewish people are leaving various places and going and settling in where? Israel, from Africa, you see, from Europe, from Asia, from China, from Japan, even some people from India also. You see, in, uh, uh, you see, September 11th, huh? there was an attack uh, uh, in uh, Bombay. No? I think probably it was in November. No? In uh, November, some uh, hotel, Taj Hotel was attacked. No? Huh? And the other tea point was attacked and the Jewish residence was attacked. You know, why particularly these places were targeted? Because these were all Jewish establishments and mainly the Europeans and Americans were living there. Therefore, even today, what happened, you know, that house where the terrorist, you see, went inside, uh, those family also shifted to Israel. So, there was no rain in Israel for almost 1,800 years. Uh, since 1878, the first time rain began to come in Israel. Just see the condition of Israel before. Just see the condition of Israel today. You see, just in a span of uh, nearly 50 to 60 years, Israel is greatly developed. Abraham. And uh, you see, the contribution for their agriculture system. Today, what all we use, uh, you see, the drip irrigation system, the sprinkler system, this was all invented by the Jewish people. Just imagine, just a few years before, uh, whenever we had to do agriculture, how we had to do cultivation and all. It was manually done. Each and every morning, they had to pump the water from the borewell and uh, you see channels for us to open and close evening and morning. But now today, a very, you see, a huge acres of land can be controlled in home, sitting in home, only by one man. Can control everything 
from his mobile itself automatically can on the sprinklers off the sprinklers this technology was invented by israel and the tractors and the harvesting system you see in europe you see more than 52 60 acres of land of wheat he harvested by only one person different so much of you see sophisticated equipments are being invented by israel you see israel is a great uh, exporter of uh, fruits uh, vegetables today we have no hybrid fruits to go to the market to buy any pomegranate or tomato or onion how is the size each and every fruits vegetables are the same size how did it grow this is all hybrid fruits this is all mentioned in the bible you see when the people of israel went for the spying the canaan land they brought uh, grapes on the shoulder no the pomegranates they were so huge that is the hybrid fruits the brethren and their cattle you see is so huge and so much of weighty and compared to our uh, cattle and all these things uh, was developed uh, by israel's first prime minister david ben gurion david ben gurion was a religious uh, person when israel got the independence the first thing he did was that uh, he gathered all the botanist all the engineers in israel and told them to develop israel as per biblical knowledge you see the bible gives us information of various plants various trees and various fruits vegetables are being grown in which place based on that information they began to develop israel read deuteronomy 8 chapter verse 79 Deuteronomy 8 chapter verse 79. Ashish Padar, Gopal Padar, can you read? Okay, brother. Hmm. For the Lord thy God bring it into uh, bring it thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths, depths that spring out of valley, valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of oil, oil olive and honey a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness thou shalt not lack anything in it a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass see he says i will bring you to the land what will be in the land wheat barley wine the grapes fig pomegranate olive honey bread milk and in those stones there are iron and brass it's in that is iron or brass or so based on this information israel was developed you see how the water uh, sources was developed in israel bible gives us the information you see in genesis 13:10 it says lot choose the land of sodom and gomorrah why because it was well watered it says because it was watered by river jordan you see and that land was called almost like a garden of eden it seems we all have studied the class of our river jordan you see how it is never a drying river it flows from mount harmon to the dead sea and dead sea is the actually the sodom and gomorrah land we have studied so even today that river jordan supplies water to the nation of israel it seems and the bible gives us the information about the, where all the wells are there isn't it ha huh? betsada bersheba we know the well of jacob on which jesus sat and drank the water the well of abimelech the well of abraham so all this information is there in the bible and sidar where where is where does the sidar grow in bible ha huh? tell me as per bible where does the cedar tree grow in israel can anybody tell me lebanon very good lebanon then olive where does olive grow think mount of olives so it was upon that mountain lot of olive trees were found that is the place where jesus went garden of gethsemane was there no then uh, rose where does rose grow in israel which place huh? sharon 
Jesus is called now. Huh? Jesus is called as huh? the Rose of Sharon. Is there in the Bible? No. So it is based on this biblical information that the land of Israel was developed. It did not randomly develop it all. Based on each and every place, what all will grow? So what all good will come out? You see, Israel developed its children. Huh? And today, you know, all the modern inventions, whichever you take, was actually invented by Jews. You see, today we have you know, a USB port. Huh? In each and every computer system, we have USB port. Before this one, it was not like this. Each and every equipment had a different cable. But now today, what is there? Universal serial bus port. Same cable you can use for multiple equipments. No more driver installation, nothing. Just put that cable, automatically everything will get installed. And today we have memory chip. You see, how is the memory chip? Pen drive. Small, minute memory chip with one TB capacity. But earlier, we used to take a CD, burn the CD, DVD. Oh, yo, some scratch happens to you. Entire data is crap. But today, eh, what is there? Small microprocessor. Small, just a microchip. Then, batteries. Earlier, how was the battery? Sir? Small battery, if you purchase from every day, Duracell, it will work for a few hours, then it will go out. But today, which is the trend? Lithium battery. Who actually invented lithium battery? Israel. It is now put in car. You see, motorcycles, electric vehicles. This was actually found by Israel. Then solar technology, solar water heater, solar, you see, uh, electricity. How? Who invented that? Israel. Big, big companies in this world are actually owned by Jewish people. You see, Levi's jeans. Eh? Who is the owner of it? Eh? Do we find the Levi's in Bible? That word, is it there in the Bible? Eh? Yes, it is there in the Bible. 12 tribes of Israel. One tribe was Levi. You got it now? See the spelling? Levi's. Levis. Okay. So Bernard Lewis he is the, you see, huh? chairperson of that company. That is actually a Jewish company. And Bill Gates, huh? Steven Spielberg, Michael Dell, Mark Zuckerberg, Nike company owner, Intel company owner, Bloomberg, any major companies in America you take, dear brethren, all founded by Jewish people. You see, the drone technology, unmanned aircraft owned by Jewish people. Today, the more number of scientists in Israel than any part of the world. You see, in Israel, each and every person are well trained in army after 10th standard. It is mandatory that every Jewish people go and serve in the army for two years. So every Jewish people is well trained in army. So all this... Uh, Development, you see, uh, actually developed and uplifted the Israel among the whole world. And today, the unemployment in Israel is just a single digit number. But uh, in Palestine, the next neighboring nations at all, the unemployment is very huge. So all this, uh, you see, development, you see, pricked the eyes of uh, the neighboring Arab, uh, you see, places. Uh, and that is the time that one person was there. You see, his name was uh, Yasser Arafat. He formed the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, and began to gather all the Arabs and fought for it. And uh, it is uh, because of uh, this one that today there is uh, really a real commotion in Israel. You see, in 1922, as I told you in the lads, uh, Lord's uh, Balfour Declaration, Israel had asked only 3% of the land that was actually uh, requested uh, uh, compared to the Arabs. But you know, the world powers granted only 1% of the land. The only the red thing you can see what is marked there, that was the only land given to Israel by the world powers. Why? If you see, during that time, you see, during the uh, First World War and the Second World War, you see, uh, the oil wells were invented. You remember, you see, the aircraft, oil, and uh, motor engine. You see, all these things were invented only after and near the First World War. Since then, 
everything was running on steam engine but once this uh, you see diesel and the petrol uh, engine that is run on oil was invented there was a great demand for oil and uh, it is the same time that that oil was found in the arab places and the uh, arab places put pressure on the world power that they may not grant israel so much of land if they ask it but yet uh, even after all the schemes and all the brethren israel was formed as a nation on may 14 1948 and the very next day you see may uh, 15 1948 early morning all the neighboring arab nations came and attacked israel and uh, decided to crush them and totally annihilate them almost each and every soldier had 100 soldiers as their opponent but even then by grace of god god rescued israel and after this in uh, 1967 <clears throat> again there was a six day war and all the neighboring arab nations decided to see to push israel into the sea mediterranean sea and kill them but even then also there was a very miraculous uh, to see god's leading for israel and again israel won the war and they actually got more land than what actually they had so in the bible if you see israel are waterproof bulletproof and fireproof why because their protection is god so dear brethren this is all the past and the present of israel but what about the future of israel what does the bible say what will happen to israel in the future bible says in the future the whole world will be against israel they will all come and attack israel read zechariah 14 chapter verse 1 and 2 zechariah 14 chapter verse 1 and 2 hmm. ിറ്റിവിറ്റി <laughs> and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city ah, you see what does it say huh ah? behold the days come i will gather all the nations underline this is the third world war god shall gather all the nations against jerusalem it seems then what will happen it seems sir you see half of the city shall be taken it seems sir houses are totally destroyed women you see spoiled and half of the city shall go to captivity so only half of the population will be uh, there in israel you know what is the size of israel it is only half the size of kerala imagine such a small nation if the whole world is attacked what will be the condition of israel all their technology what we saw no all the rich people none of their drones none of their scientists none of the inventions none of the sophisticated gadgets will be able to save them not even america will be able to save them and who will save them what will happen that is the time that god will use the opportunity you see to humble israel that they may cry unto the lord read brother ezekiel 3816 ezekiel 3816 and thou shalt come up against my people of israel as a cloud to cover cover the land it shall be in the later days and i will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me when when i shall be sanctified in thee o gog before their eyes uh, what will happen in him sir you see the enemies of israel shall cover israel how like a cloud it seems imagine if a cloud covers the land what will happen the sunlight never falls on the ground similarly huh eh? the entire you see world will be against they will cover it but that is the time 
God will use his opportunity that the heathen may know about the one true God. How? When in their helpless condition, you see, the people of Israel realizing that none of their technology, anything will work, they will turn to God. That's the last option. They will cry to the Lord. Lord, please help us. Have mercy on us. They will cry. That is the time that God will pour out the Holy Spirit upon them. How will they cry? Read Zechariah 12.10. Zechariah 12.10, brother. Huh? Zechariah 12.10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have, they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him. And as one mourned for his only son, and shall be in the bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. First one, you see, when God shall pour out the Spirit, Holy Spirit, underline, that is the time that Israel shall receive the Holy Spirit of God. Then, you see, we have studied in Ezekiel 37, no? the valley of dry bones. All the bones were gathered. Everything came up. You see, muscles came, nerves came, skin came, but there was no life in it. No spirit, no breath was there. When God shall pour out the Holy Spirit, they shall plead for mercy, saying, sir. They shall cry. How will they cry? Huh? As if they cry for the only begotten son. Huh? Without realizing the crucified Messiah, they will cry. Yo, what we have done? Without our knowledge, they killed him. No? That is what Revelation 1 7 says. They shall see everybody, everybody shall see him coming out of the clouds, and they shall wail for him. Wail in what? In pity, that without knowing that he is the king of kings, we have crucified him. That is the time Israel's eyes will be opened. That is the time when they shall cry for God for help. God will come and fight for them. How will God fight? Read Zechariah 14.3. Now we read Zechariah 14.1 and 2. Now read Zechariah 14.3. How will God fight? Hmm. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Uh, he will fight as he fought in the day of battle. How did God fight in the day of battle? You see, how did God fight in the day of battle? In the olden days, sir. Same way he'll fight it. Himself. Lot of examples are there. How did God fight Gideon? With Gideon, 300 Jewish people went and fought against 1,20,000 Midianites. They did not even fight at all. They just blew the trumpet, broke the pitchers, made the light shine. Automatically, by the time they went down, what happened? The war was finished. They took uh, the, you see, the reward, the jewels, uh, and the spoil, and returned. That's all. That is how God fought uh, during the days of Ezekiah. Sennacherib, Assyrian king, came to attack Israel, destroyed completely. But what happened? Nothing happened. The same night when he prayed, the angel came and destroyed 1,85,000 people. Everybody were dead as they woke early in the morning. The king also returned to his nation and died there. This is the way God fought in the olden days. Same way God will again fight when in the third world war. Such a way that entire world and Israel also will realize this is not our technology. This is the hand of the Lord. Then what will happen? That is the time that God will make a covenant with people of Israel. The new covenant. Read Jeremiah 31, 31 to 33. Jeremiah 31st chapter, 31 to 34. Huh? Behold, I will come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, <laughs> not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. It's my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, right in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Uh, and mm, mm. they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, mm. and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. 
for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them said the lord and i will forgive their iniquity and i will remember their sin no more well, that is the time that god shall remember the sin no more they shall be god's children god shall make covenant with them in such a way that from the least to the greatest everybody shall know the lord there will be no need for a neighbor to come and teach somebody to know the lord so bible will be very clear every world will be converted to become a jew and seeing this one the other nations uh, you see other people uh, will uh, come to israel seeking their god this is how from israel the kingdom shall be established first in israel and then slowly move to other parts of the world read zechariah 8 chapter 21 to 23 brother gopal brother can you read jeremiah 8 chapter 21 to 23 oh, sure brother and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying let us go speedily to pray before the lord and to seek the lord of hosts i will go also ye yeah, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the lord of hosts in jerusalem and to pray before the lord thus said the lord of hosts in those days it shall come to pass that that ten men shall take hold out of uh, all languages of of the nations even shall take hold of the skirt of him that that is a jew saying we will go with you for we have heard that god is with you see the ten nation strong nation strong people gentiles they shall realize that uh, god's grace is upon israel god's uh, mercy is on upon israel and in that great time of trouble they will also seek god's mercy how we will come with you we have heard that god is there with you so please help us please help us to establish peace uh, in our nation also and they will come to jewish uh, you see nation and from the jewish nation what will happen uh, the truth the kingdom shall be established all over the world dear brethren this is uh, actually about israel uh, you see a very short uh, a subject uh, will be sending the notes to you please go through the notes uh, you see and uh, any doubts any questions uh, you can uh, ask